take a moment of silence so each of us can reflect on our own faith and its place in our work here today. If you would, please stand and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call this evening, all members present, along with Superintendent Blaine Conley and Recording Secretary Jessica McFarland. Our upcoming board meetings, January 21st, 2019, will be a regular meeting at the Burkett Educational Center at 7 p.m. February, well, February 11th, 2019, will be a regular meeting at the middle school at 7 p.m. And March 11th, 2019, will be a regular meeting at the high school at 7 p.m. We'll move on to Spotlight on the Valley. Welcome to the introduction of new employees. I know we have one uh, of our new employees here, Dakota Snap. Dakota, can you stand up? Uh, you're going to be doing some evening custodial work here at, here at Mentone. I know that started. We, we appreciate you coming on. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, <laughs> it's very hard to talk right in front of everybody while well, just <laughs> do it in any way. Um, but, <laughs> Um, for a little about myself, I actually, um, I'm a great kid, and I'm actually a nice kid around the whole public. Um, I'm actually the a little in the funny side, so I have a good sense of humor, and I like to talk right from the friends. So, pretty much talked about what's the problem in life, and actually, um, I don't live too far, so I live four blocks from here. Um, so I have... Like about two brother no, actually I have a brother, two sisters. One sister is in college right now. Um, she'll be coming home like about a couple weeks or so. Um, but yeah, and actually I do soccer and track. So. Welcome aboard. Thanks, Dakota. Thank you. Thanks, Dakota. No problem. We can move on to our TVHS uh, FFA soils team, Mr. Jones. I'll let you take it. Uh, I'm not going to read it off. <laughs> it's not so bad. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The, the, in, in Silla Forestry. There we go. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll go over a couple things that uh, we've done since the last board meeting. Um, we'll have Dylan stand up, and Haley, and Rwanda, and Olivia. Uh, this is uh, a few of our kids that competed in the Ancilla Invitational. Um, Uh, Dylan was the second high individual uh, in the contest. There was 60, 70 kids in it. Um, and these two were right outside the top 10. Uh, so as a team, they were second overall. So uh, they did a really nice job. Uh, Olivia was also there in the junior division and was third overall high individual. And then we went to area last week, our area contest. 23, I believe there were 23 teams in the FFA division, and we won it. We were first. Uh, and then we went down to Purdue on Saturday, <laughs> and Dylan forgot something. <laughs> forgot a couple of ideas. Uh, we had an okay day. Uh, we were 18th? I think 18th out of 55 teams, so they didn't do too bad. So. Congratulations. Um, we, we appreciate your leadership. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, a week and a half ago, uh, it hasn't been in the papers. I haven't said anything to Mr. Well, I may have said something to Mr. Perry, but I don't know. 
Uh, our what we call a chapter reading contest is which is a contest on parliamentary procedure. Uh, we had 10 girls uh, compete in that as a team, and we were third at the district uh, about a week and a half ago. So, Second. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Move on to student reports. Um, you guys want to give your overall report first off, and then we'll. <laughs> sure. Well, winter sports are going really good. Uh, the Miracle Tree is tomorrow night at the middle school. Uh, student council went shopping Thursday for the Miracle Tree. And then the South Christmas party is tomorrow night, so we'll be watching your children. And then FFA is December 18th. Uh, we have our Christmas party. And then a choir concert was tonight, and it looked really full when I drove by it. Miracle Tree's Wednesday. Not tomorrow. Oh, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, last week we did I-Step retake testing, and this week we're doing Toys for Tots, where we can bring in new unwrapped toys to give to children in need, and we're competing against Whitco Student Council for that. And on Friday night, for the boy, I think it's the boys basketball game. Um, if you bring a new unwrapped toy, you get him free. And then finals start Thursday, and our band concert is Wednesday. Okay. You guys want to talk about the Miracle Tree? Those of you that are involved with that, Adam, I know you, from the high school perspective, we've heard that. But you can talk about the. Yeah, I can talk a little bit. The Miracle Tree is a, an event that was originally started by Mill Creek Church in Rochester, and they did this event over in Rochester. And um, uh, three years ago, they began a Miracle Tree in Valley, in the Valley Corporation. And basically, it helps Valley Elementary kids. And so the way the program works is, is, is kids are um, chosen, and, and tags of those families are hung on trees, and community members can come in and basically adopt those families can go out and buy gifts and, and basically treat those those kids to a wonderful Christmas that maybe they might be a little less fortunate to have that Christmas. So um, that's kind of what it's about. And then there's a, an event night, uh, a celebration night that they have on, on Wednesday evening, um, which will be at the middle school. And basically these, these kids are treated and these families are treated to a, a, a nice meal, uh, a family photo, Santa Claus will be there. They'll be able to bake and make cookies and do all kinds of fun games with, I think, the leadership team from the student council. Um, and then they have bouncy houses and such in the gym. So basically, they create a night and atmosphere for these families to have just a wonderful, wonderful night. Um, and then at the end of the night, they get to take these, these gifts home that were wrapped by community members like yourself. So it's, it's a great organization and, um, and an event, and it wouldn't happen without the community and the school and everybody coming together to make that happen. So it's, it's just an amazing event, so. Is there a number of families that we know? Um, it's well over 100. There's 100, I, I believe there's 125 families that are assisted this year, um, just in the Valley Corporation. Um, and I think there's just over 100 families in the Rochester Corporation that's being helped. Um, and it's, it's, it's amazing. I think it was over 300 kids from our corporation. It's awesome. It's, it's awesome. Thank you for providing yeah. that. That's, uh, oh, Dylan, some questions for you. Just to get to know you and Valerie here, um, and I'm just going to, we'll, we'll talk to Valerie next uh, month, but just tell us about your, your family. I know you grew up in Akron, um, some hobbies. Go, go ahead. <laughs> well, my dad is Raymond Wood, and my mom is Jill Wood, and I have a younger brother named Shane Wood. Um, my hobbies are fishing and hunting. What, what grade your brother in? He's in. Um, Ninth grade. Ninth grade, okay. So you bring him to school? Yep, every day. <laughs> you feel the love there. Yeah. It's great. So what, what are your future plans? You're a senior, and what's the, you have a plan for next year? Yeah, my future plans, I hopefully will get into the United States Naval Academy. If that doesn't work, then Navy ROTC at Purdue. Okay, great. So then, then I kind of, I sent you the questions ahead of time. So your, your favorite elementary, middle school, and high school teachers? Um, I would have to say my el favorite elementary school teacher, they were, all of them were really good, but I'd say Mr. Ocock stood out the most. He was always, he always read to the class, and I still remember them books. It, yeah. it was always really nice. And then my favorite middle school teacher would be Mr. Hinkle. He always, he always taught math really well and explained it, and he went through every problem up on the board and really explained it really well. 
And then my two favorite uh, high school teachers would be uh, Mr. Hinkle and Mrs. Day. Uh, they always taught physics and chemistry and set the foundation that will help me in the future for them type of problem. Awesome. Okay. So, so what's your favorite subject? Physics. Okay. Well, we appreciate having you uh, on the on the board as student representatives the past year and a half, and you, you always do a great job of representing our school corporation. So, a lot to be proud of. Thank you. Yeah. Not to put you on the spot, but who's your favorite school board member? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you can be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the time where we ask if there's uh, any items from the visitors. Would anybody like to speak to the board this evening? Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I'm Mike Gable, uh, Mentor Fire Department Chief, and I just wanted to come and thank you guys for allowing us to use the high school for our uh, fundraising banquet for the families of the lost children and children in <coughs> Uh, out on Highway 25. Uh, Aaron stepped up and, and uh, was a big piece of that, getting guys together to cook and eat things, and the, the school allowed us to use that facility there. Uh, we've raised about $90,000 for those families wow. since that service. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for everything that you do yes. for our corporations. Is there anybody else? Move on to the approval of the consent agenda. Number one, approve the minutes of the November 8th, 2018 executive session. Number two, approve the minutes of the November 12th, 2018 regular meeting. Number three, approve the hiring of the following personnel. Tracy Holloway, cook at the middle school. Michelle Mahaska, cook at the high school. Veronica Schufelt, instructional assistant, Minton Elementary. Erica McCullough, Instructional Assistant at Minton Elementary and Dakota Snap, Custodian at Minton Elementary. Number four, approve the maternity leave for the following personnel. Katie Yours, first grade teacher at Minton Elementary. Number five, approve the classified and administrative salaries. Gentlemen, do I hear a motion to accept the approval of the consent agenda? I'll make that motion now. <coughs> do I hear a second? I'll second that item. Is there any further discussion on the consent agenda as read? All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, state by saying no. The motion carries. We'll move on to approval of claims and payroll. We have uh, one pre-written claim listing this evening dated November 30th, 2018 in the amount of $696,191.06. Our regular claim listing is dated December 10th, 2018 in the amount of uh, $212,378.30. We have six payrolls this evening dated uh, November 2nd, 2018 in the amount of $386,699.16. That is a regular payroll. Uh, November 9th, 2018 in the amount of $26,326. That is an ECA payroll. Uh, November 16th in the amount of $401,304.23. That's a regular payroll. Uh, November 21st, 2018 in the amount of $10,853.35. That is back pay for certified staff. Uh, November uh, 23rd, 2018 in the amount of $45,159. And 54 cents. That is the teacher appreciation grant for certified staff members from the state of Indiana. Uh, November 30th, 2018, uh, in the amount of $393,500.83, and that is a regular payroll. I submit these claims and payroll for your approval. I hear a motion for claims and payroll. I'll make that motion to approve this. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, state by saying no. Motion carries. We'll go to the financial report. 
The school board's been provided the reconciled bank statement and monthly financial report of funds for the month of November 2018. In summary, our receipts and disbursements for the November uh, 2018 are total receipts for all fund, funds, um, $1,641,808.75. Total disbursements for all funds, $2,106,418.40. Thank you, Blaine. Uh, there's no old business this evening, so we'll move on to new business. Number one, accept the following donations. Okay. Now we received a donation from the First Baptist Church. That's a library donation uh, in, the, in the name of uh, uh, the estate of Leroy Markley. And that thirty-five dollars uh, went to help um, the. Uh, it went to the Mentone for the, the um, families of the accident back on October thirtieth. Um, we've got keys grants that uh, we've got teachers um, and uh, Lori helped right here. Uh, Lisa Lynch from the high school. She uh, she got a um, a grant for supplies for a clay slab art project. Chris Rassi, um, Akron Elementary School, fourth grade teacher, circuit boards for science instruction. Jennifer Rodin from the high school, uh, science teacher, support for the robotics team. Kathy Olson, uh, it wouldn't be a meeting without Cass Kathy Olson getting a grant. Um, with, we've got uh, alternative seating for functional life skills students. And then Lori helped a couple teachers um, work on grants here, one from the middle school and supplies for math instruction, and also uh, Mentone fifth grade dictionaries for the fifth grade uh, classes. Uh, Lori, who are those two teachers? Um, Precious Brenton um, at the middle school uh -huh. and Amanda, Amanda uh, Medley at Mentone. Okay, great. Thank you. So, can we get those yeah. approved? Jim, can I have a motion to accept the donation and the keys grants this evening? I'll make that motion to approve these. Any other second? No, I'll second that. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Okay. Number three. We move on to uh, suicide prevention and awareness policy. Um, the Indiana General Assembly passed legislation requiring school corporations to adopt a policy intended to increase uh, child suicide awareness and prevention. Um, the statute requires all, all grades, um, 5 through 12, uh, teachers in the corporation, charter schools, and accredited non-public schools to participate in training every three school years. We, we've been doing this for several years within our school corporation. Uh, we, we train new employees uh, when, they, when they come in and um, we, we have our folks go through training on a yearly basis. Um, we've used the model provided by the, the Indiana Department of Education. We've had to create our own policy that, that we will post on our uh, school website. Um, so we're, we're really asking you to um, approve this policy. It's Indiana Code 20-28-3-6. So we are partnering with the Bowen Center um, they, they've been a good partner with for us in helping us with this training. Um, so we're, we're asking that you uh, approve this uh, policy for our school corporation. Do I hear a motion to approve the suicide prevention and awareness policy? I'll make that motion now. Do I hear a second? A second. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, state by saying no. <coughs> great. Number four. We've got some great news. Um, Lori's, Lori's going to talk about the $30,000 innovation planning grant from the Indiana Department of Education that we were awarded. Pretty excited about this grant opportunity. Um, the Indiana Department of Education, um, the Office of E-Learning, um, had a grants available um, for districts to, um, the scope of the grant includes using an outside vendor to do a technology readiness assessment or audit an infrastructure audit. Um, so this is an outside vendor coming in and looking at your strengths and your weaknesses and your gaps. Um, it also provides um, our leadership team um, school visits to um, other school districts in the state that are doing it very well. And also the most exciting part is a lot of professional development and <coughs> learning for our teachers and staff um, just to bring um, more engagement and enrichment to instruction um, using technology. 
Um, today, our team sat down, we did a, um, a self-assessment. Um, the Indiana Department of Education teams up with Future Ready Schools. Um, it's a well-known organization. Um, they're funded um, by some pretty big players in education, um, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Carnegie Foundation, and a lot of national partners for, with Future Ready, um, the um, National Association for the Superintendents, um, the National School Board Association. So they're very reputable and um, really leading in education right now. So excited to team up with them. But our team did a two-hour self-assessment this afternoon over several gears of the framework, um, which include curriculum, instruction, and assessment, use of space and time, robust infrastructure, data and privacy, community partnerships, personalized professional learning, budget and resources, and across all those gears, collaborative leadership. Um, this two-hour self-assessment gave us a 68-page report that we didn't have time to read before the meeting tonight, so that'll be one of our next steps. Our team will get back together and look at that report, and it'll help guide us. Um, we're currently vetting the outside vendors. Um, it might be one or two vendors. Uh, we're um, checking references with other school districts that have gone through the Innovation Planning Grant. It's really setting us up um, for um, some great data, um, multiple data points to go for more technology grants in the future. And we're really just trying to prepare our students um, for digital learning and um, personalized student learning. So um, Valley's going to be on the cusp of um, what's in the future. We're going to um, our students will be future ready, whether it's career, or college, or out in the community. So pretty excited about this opportunity. We have a great team leading it. Anything I missed? Team members? Appreciate all your work. Really Thanks, Lori. Yeah. It's a great opportunity for the corporation. So we're quite yeah. excited. Yeah. So this will, um, with this grant and the planning that we're going to take from it and the initiatives that we'll, we'll put in place, that will open up other grant opportunities that we'll apply for to, to expand in the future. So this is, um, this is what it's about. And we just appreciate your time and all your effort. One thing I did, didn't mention that's really a cool part of it is um, we'll get a lot of feedback um, through surveys and focus groups. Our focus groups will be students and staff, and also we'll be surveying our parents, our community members, our staff, so it's just yeah, pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. These type of grants that will keep Valley on top. Yeah. Valley yeah. was great. Keep it on top. Great job, Lori. Well, I need a motion to accept the grant. I'll make that motion now. Do I have a second? I'll second that out. All in favor, state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, state by saying no. <coughs> Graduation pathways. So, Mr. Craig, you want to talk about our pathways? <coughs> sure. Um, as I think most of you are aware, uh, State Board of Education, um, uh, I believe it was last, uh, this time last year, uh, really kind of through all high schools across Indiana for a loop and uh, it's been in the works a lot here and what they've done is they've come up with uh, a new way for uh, students to graduate and uh, right now we're currently this will apply as the only way for the class of 2023 to graduate but what they've said is that if this would benefit students currently um, in high school that you're allowed to do that up in your approval here tonight. Um, so really right now, probably the best way to explain this is we're living in both worlds. We have the traditional way to graduate, get your 44 credits, pass your I step, and you're on your way out the door. Um, the other way is under graduation pathways. And uh, to maybe make it as simple as I can, what you really want to think about are, are three boxes or three buckets you have to fill. Uh, the first bucket is your traditional credits, like you would get any time. That still remains at 44, and of course they need to be the 44 right credits, but uh, 44 credits. Uh, the second box, uh, once you check the first box, is that you have to show that you have been part of a work-based learning experience, a service-based learning experience, or a project-based learning experience. Currently, right now at the high school, we're really looking at uh, a lot of different classes that fit those options, but also looking at English 12 to make sure that we get every student uh, that needs to fill that box the opportunity to get that through a service-based and a work-based learning project. Uh, so we feel really strongly about being able to box, uh, check box number two. Uh, where this, uh, in, in a lot of ways it's a game, but where it gets really interesting is box three. Uh, and there are several um, components of box three. 
Um, unfortunately, a lot of those components are really after the same kit. Uh, for example, um, you know, one of the components to be able to check box three would be able to pass a dual credit, or at least three dual credit classes at a C or better. Uh, the same thing would be for the ACT and SAT benchmarks. Well, currently right now the Pathways benchmarks are uh, higher than what Indiana and Purdue are accepting as they're uh, getting the or get in, you know get into school. So it's very very difficult. But there are some uh, graduation pathways in Box Three. For example, the ASVAB test, which we just gave to seniors uh, here in the fall, and we're going to give again uh, to juniors in the spring, is is one that we found some success with. Uh, and the other option, too, uh, where we have um, many classes at uh, Tiffany Valley High School and also at uh, the Warsaw Area Career Center is through what they're calling Education Pathways. Uh, Mr. Jones, it was here earlier, offers a lot in ag. Uh, we have business pathways through the work-based learning. Uh, certainly Mr. Franklin, Mr. Heinhold, uh, and Mrs. Lannis also offer us uh, other pathways for students that maybe struggle with a component, and usually that component is uh, the ISEP. Uh, so this is a way uh, to help our students right now um, be able to um, graduate uh, under the kind of uh, new regime that's out there. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Well, I guess we need a motion to accept. I'll make that motion to accept. All right. <laughs> Pathway. Pathways. Uh, your second? I'll second. All in favor state by saying aye. 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 All opposed state by saying no. Okay. School letter grades. Um, so we'll start with the elementary. And Mr. Dom, do you want to talk? Sure, well, it's good to see all of you. And uh, hard to believe the holiday season's upon us here. So that wasn't my baby picture. <laughs> um, That's the first day of school. There you go. There you go. <laughs> So uh, for uh, our, our school improvement focus and things, we've got a few areas of things we're really looking at. And, um, I read a book by a Schmoker uh, early in the fall and things and, and about school improvement. He said, you know, uh, one of the most important things you need to do is make sure that the teacher is delivering tier one instruction, that that's, uh, you know, done really, really well and things. And so uh, that's just good old, you know, teachers in the classroom and teaching and making sure a lot of good uh, practices are being utilized and things. And so that's been a real focus uh, so far uh, this year. Um, I had our instructional coach actually went in and spent a day in all our classrooms uh, just to provide feedback and things uh, to the teachers and uh, to help set goals, those kinds of things. And then uh, workshop models, instructional expectations, those kind of things have been clearly communicated and things. Our teachers are doing a really nice job with that. And so uh, that's one of the main aspects. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer observations. Um, I've always said that a lot of times, you know, when you have good people doing things in different classrooms, uh, sometimes, you know, you hear how other people do things, but you don't really know. And so we've actually scheduled out uh, teachers going into each other's classrooms, watching each other. Uh, and Mrs. Newman kind of helps run, run that and fill, it filters through her. Uh, and our teachers are doing a nice job. I've got a lot of good conversations going in the building, or I didn't think about that, you know, those kind of things. And sometimes some, some people think you might need to go to Indianapolis or different places for professional development, when in all actuality, sometimes it's actually 30, 40 feet away. Um, and uh, so our teachers are doing a nice job with that. Uh, we're doing some book studies and grade level teams are just uh, reading about uh, different uh, topics that are, are important to them. And so they have those opportunities and we'll be doing that in the second semester here. Uh, we'll continue to refine analyzing data uh, and uh, you, you can't do that enough just in terms of uh, maximizing your instructional time and, and things of that nature. And then our PLC process continues to be discussed, evaluated, uh, those kind of things. These are just some of the main bullets and things. There are also a few others that uh, we're doing. Um, uh, I believe a corporation here uh, right after Christmas break is having a really good speaker come in that talks about just how to help kids who emotionally struggle. Um, uh, Lori Destoltz, and uh, she's uh, uh, going to talk about some of the concepts of what we can do in classrooms to help those kiddos that are coming in that are already really stressed out. And we began doing some of those things at Mentone. And so we're really looking forward to that session and things, the uh, new year and things. We're working on vocabulary standards-based report cards. It's a joint effort from uh, my partner over here, Chrissy, and I. And uh, by the end of the school year here, we'll have fourth and fifth grade standards-based report cards, which will be really good. So our entire elementary levels will have those and then vertical alignment discussions, those kinds of things. So those are just a few of the things that we're working on for the school year to really improve, to get better. Um, and as we're doing this, 
we're excited in education because we have a brand new state test. And so uh, uh, ISTEP has been something that I've always uh, known my whole career here, and we're going to iLearn. And so that's going to be actually a, a brand new test. Um, we've taken some pretty direct steps to be prepared for that. We've given our teachers uh, to our training where they received information about what the test structure is going to be like and things. Um, it's going to be a lot different in that, you know, back in the old days when, you know, if, if I were to take ISTEP, you know, you open your test book and you try to answer questions and things in a given amount of time. Whereas what this test is going to do is if you start out, and let's say the test asks a third grader, you know, what's 15 times 18, if the student gets the answer right, it bumps the level up a little bit. And so as the test, go, as, as the test goes, it'll constantly, you know, uh, monitor where the students are at and things. So it'll bump them higher, lower, those kinds of things. The other thing that um, we're looking at um, at Mentone that I think hurt us this last time with I-STEP is uh, we really didn't work on typing. And uh, we found out uh, right before, right after Christmas break last year, that we were um, going to need to type for an applied skills part. And so to have the ability to read something and be able to type the answer out is something that we needed to work on and things. And we're doing so this year and really putting some emphasis onto that. And then just a renewed emphasis on reading some different passages, being able to really extrapolate you know, some of the evidence and things from the text and being able to type that out things in, in those answers. So the iLearn test is going to be brand new. Uh, we'll see how it goes and things, but I think we're preparing our kids well for it and being intentional about that. So just a few things from a Mentone side that we're doing to improve uh, during our 18-19 school year. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Andy. Yep. Questions? Christy. of our report card data I was able to pull from the state and that we keep track of. And just to show you, in 1516, well, Akron has been a C school now three years in a row. In 1516, we were at 79%, so we're, we're right there. 1617, we dropped a little bit, 77.3, and then this year, we were 79.3. So we are right there at that B and looking at different things we can do and what we're doing to improve that. Um, uh, letter grade and just improve our students. Um, what, working, what we're working on this year to improve is um, instead of four days of RTI, um, we're looking at five days of RTI. We, like Randy said, we're doing our standard base report cards and that has just been a blessing, honestly. Um, K3 is standard base this year and they know their students, they know those standards and it is just amazing and the parents really know where your student is, where your child is with a standard base report card. We have um, really have pushed out the common uh, formative assessments so that all the teachers are giving the same assessments in the grade level and we're looking at those assessments and using those assessments to drive our instruction. We have a, um, several different grades that are doing what they call a math power hour. So on top of their 60 minutes of their block of math, they're doing another power hour um, within their day to get more math in. Um, that's where Akron's data shows low, and um, especially in my fourth grade. So um, we're looking at that. We put that in last year. It jumped those uh, um, kids' uh, data up in fourth grade. We're continuing that this year and hope to see those numbers even go higher with that data. Um, really looking at the new um, iLearn blueprints, those, that new test, the iLearn has blueprints and looking at that and making sure that our curriculum maps are aligning with those new blueprints and that our report cards are aligning and looking at that. That's definitely a work in progress since we just <coughs> got those this year. So we're uh, really taking a, a deep look at that. Um, really have shown webinars and practice tests to our teachers so that they can get used to what's on that new iLearn test. We started, Akron started that back in uh, September, October timeframe and um, getting those practice tests because it is very different for our children. Instead of reading a passage, answering questions, they will read several passages 
and have to answer from several passages that are they read at one basically one time and then they have to be able to cite where they're getting their information um, from. So a lot of practice and a lot of learning um, for the elementary of, of this for our teachers and our students. Um, this year we are having um, a rotation of where the instructional coach and myself go into, we meet with PLC, but we're really focusing specifically on their math data this year and looking at that. Um, back in August when it was the teacher's work day, we ask our teachers as grade levels to do a goal within their grade level. And so they had to write their goal. And then um, my instructional coach, which, which is Hillary Parker, we go into their meetings, check up on how their goal is going, what can we do um, to help them if they need some help. And so that's something new we're doing this year with their team goals. We're just staying true to our curriculum, to our workshop. We are workshop-based um, schools, and we are staying true to that, um, making sure that our teachers are doing workshop and following through with that because those are best practices. Um, the K-2 lower elementary are really focusing on their morning math meetings and just trying to make sure they're circulating all that math um, from the prior grade to the new grade and making sure we're just going over that every day in their morning math meetings so that they're ready in third grade and knowing those basic skills of math. And then like Randy said, the typing program. Akron was fortunate to have a typing program that we've done for several years in our computer lab and um, Mrs. Kindig um, has done a nice job of implementing that and we're, she's trying to just push that a little bit further because of everything having to be typed on that iLearn. And so those um, three, four, and five kids um, uh, can type. It used to be they needed to type a little bit faster last year. It was time this year. The test isn't timed. So that is, it's much better for elementary because it, it's, it's hard for them to learn those typing skills at that young age um, properly and fast. So we're continuing that. But that's what's going on at Akron. So just the last four years on the new growth and performance model, this is just some comparison data for those four years. Um, and really looking at the, the 2018 data, what I want to highlight is on proficiency, we were almost 5% up from where we were last year. Growth was up 18.4%. Overall, our, our performance score was up 11.6%. So we saw a lot of really good gains for, for the middle school and our data there. Go to the next page, um, just digging deeper into the data. Math has been outstanding for us the last two years and this year especially. So if you look, um, just a few stats there, we had 96 kids last year pass plus math. Um, that's almost a quarter of our school, okay? And that's uh, up from 54 kids in 2015. So a 42 kid gain in, in four years. Um, eighth grade proficiency is is at 63.4 percent. We were at 41.9 four years ago, so that's a 21.5 percent growth in math proficiency in eighth grade. Our overall proficiency is up 11.9 percent in those four years, and our growth is up 27.2 points there. Let's get this next slide. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Stay back. Well, go back to the other one first. I want to finish talking about that stuff here. Um, Lang Arts proficiency, just looking at last year, this year, we're up 2%, but we had 17.5% uh, growth increase. Lang Arts is still an area that we're, we're looking at as a focus area. We're, we're down a little bit over the four year trend. Um, and so that's something that we want to, we're going to keep our goals and focus. The one I really want to point out is, is the third, the state average for passing both English language arts and math at the middle school level was 80, or excuse me, 48.6% this past year. We were 46.4, so we were just below the state average. But if you look at that compared to last year, the state average dropped half a percent. We went up 5.2% overall in our building. 
in that category. So we're really proud of the improvements that we made. We're really proud. We're really proud of the the growth overall. And then if you look at the federal letter grade, we were a 79.9 C. Um, we don't have enough students in the the English language learner subgroup to count for that 5%, so that's thrown out. And the difference between the state letter grade and the federal letter grade is federal caps growth at 100, where the state lets you, that their scoring is different. So that 97.7 growth grade for the federal is what kept us right there at that 79%. And then the other piece for the federal for the middle school is chronic absenteeism. So even though we had almost a 97% attendance rate, we lose points for any kid who's out seven days, regardless of whether they're excused, medical, unexcused, any of those things. So our, our score there was just under 92%. You want to go? One thing from that last slide I am going to talk about, we don't have to go back and look at it, but since 2006, this is the highest letter grade the middle schools achieved in the history of the letter grade. So we're really proud of that. Um, these are our, our goals in our school improvement plan. We want to get our proficiency up in Lang Arts to 70%. Uh, we're at 58.8 this year. We want to get math to 70%. We're at just over 63 right now. And it's really good to say that in uh, the first time in seven years of writing the school achievement plan, we want to maintain a goal. We're there with goal three at being at 100 points or above our growth, and we want to make sure we stay there as we move to this new test. So the way we're going to do that, uh, if you go to the next slide, is to keep doing what we've been doing which is working that PLC process. So step one is we're looking at our curriculum maps every year at the beginning of the year and making sure that our tier one instruction is solid. We're developing power standards. Uh, staff at the middle school have to uh, create daily lesson plans that are on Google Docs and we talk about those when we do walkthroughs and evaluations. Step two is we use formative assessments to see what our kids are learning. We've got NWA testing that we just wrapped up round two here a week ago, department developed formative assessments and then daily skills checks and progress monitoring in the classroom. Step three is looking at the data. We want to know who knows which skills, we want to know who doesn't, we want to know who needs support, and then that last step is remediation. So we have a built-in advisory period that we use for remediation. We have Title I math support with a paraprofessional that works with our kids that struggle, and then Tier 2 instruction in the classroom. There are areas we're really good at here. There are areas we're still working to improve. We're still a B. We want to be an A school, but we're excited that we're moving in the right direction and we feel that this process is what's got us there and we're going to stick to it and keep working to, to see the growth and achievement. So that's all I got. Any questions? Yeah, great job, Thanks. Okay. Okay. Right. What you see here on the first slide is just a real comparison from last year uh, to 2016-17. As you can see, uh, we're very proud to announce that uh, not only are we are an A again, this is uh, from the Indiana Department of Education, but we also uh, increased. And that was, uh, it was a huge uh, accomplishment. I've got, I've got great students, two of them over here. Uh, we've got a great staff that worked really, really, really hard. I'm um, just very, very proud to have a 94.1. Uh, this class uh, um, you know, had some challenges. Uh, I, I think that uh, it was a lot different. You know, you're not really comparing apples to apples when you're comparing classes, but it was a little smaller class, um, a lot higher uh, special education percentage, uh, but uh, to be able to come up 94.1 and compare, uh, just super, super proud. Uh, the one thing that you can see they're comparing is uh, the performance was down a little bit, and I'll talk about that. That's just basically, did you pass or not pass math and English? Uh, but where you can see where they made up for it was in growth uh, and made huge strides there. And, and, you know, talking to other area principals and to have 126 points of growth is just, uh, it's really unheard of. It just gives credit to how hard the kids and the teachers have been working. So just a quick little comparison there. Um, go ahead and go to the next one with Drake. You know, I thought maybe you'd want to see, like, you know, how do they even come up with these numbers? You know, sometimes it can be kind of confusing. 
Uh, what you kind see of. is kind of confusing. <laughs> yeah, we haven't even got to the Fed one yet. Yeah, it's confusing. Um, and what you see is there's really two categories that your students get put into. Top 75% there or bottom 25%. And you earn points uh, for growth. And then those points then are carried down. You can see there in the middle. And they're weighted 50%. Uh, and then you get your weighted points that that goes into that other on the, on the first page that you get to see. And then your bottom is your performance. And uh, performance is much easier to figure out because that's the percentage that passed the English exam. And that's the percentage that passed the math. Uh, and you put those two together, that 126.5 times your 20% and 43.2 times your 20%, and then you know, you're, you're 40% on your way to your overall letter grade. The rest of your letter grade then is made up of your college and career readiness, uh, which would mainly be your graduation rate, uh, your CTE, uh, your dual credit, and those type of things, where, where we're really, really, really excelling there. But again, just can't say enough about the growth. Uh, and just kind of wanted to give you an idea in case you ever wonder, well, how did they even come up with those numbers? Well, there you go. There you go. Um, we're also very proud to announce uh, that we not only received an A from the Indiana Department of Education, we also uh, received an A uh, from the United States Department of Education. You see we're at 90.9. Uh, again, very, very proud. Uh, I'm, I am proud to say that uh, I know that we're the only one in the area. Uh, that was able to receive both an A from the state and the federal. There were a few around, uh, but to have both is, is, is just, again, credit to the students and credit to the staff. Uh, there weren't many double A's um, anywhere in the state, so to have that is, is really good. Again, I just have the formulas there. Uh, again, Scott mentioned too, you know, the, the, the feds do like to, to cap it at 100. Uh, that's one of the reasons. Uh, the other reason is their formula is a little different, a little bit higher uh, basis as far as performance, which would hurt us. But in the end, you're still having a 90.9. Uh, we're very excited to uh, show you that today. Um, this just gives you a, a really good look at our data. Uh, we're, we're very data driven at the high school, uh, really concentrating. And this is an NWA. So this gives you an idea of where we're at right now. And what you're looking at here is language arts, and you can see that there's really four main color-coded categories. And those categories are our students that are passing right now and showing growth. And this test would be, they took it the, really the first week they arrived to school, and they took it right at the end of the nine weeks, and we'll have actually one more benchmark. Uh, so you're, the gold area there is the percent that would right now pass the I-STEP exam and are showing growth. The purple are the percentage of kids that are showing that they are above the cut score but not growing. I will say we're not, we're not as really concerned about this group because when you get really, really high, it's hard to show growth, right? When you get to a certain point, you know, sometimes you might come down one or two points, but you're still above the benchmark. That's good. Uh, your next one there, you see there's a percent that are not passing but growing. Obviously, we're really excited that, about that group because they're showing, hey, we're improving along the way. And then that percent successful, that's the, really the total of the first three categories. We'd love to see that get there. And what you can see is grade 9, 10, and 11. Um, grade 11 is, needs to have a little asterisk because those would be students that have not passed yet. Once you pass, we're no longer uh, going to take your NWA data. We're, we're going to take that test away from you because they become tested so often. So when you look at that grade 10, that would really, uh, if we could get to that percentage, which 69, that would be 10% of growth. Now, that's unlikely, but those are the real bubble kids that we're really narrowing in on, really trying to, to figure out. Um, you know, how we can target them the best. And then, of course, then the last column is the kids that are not passing and not growing, and, and those are the ones we're working really, really hard through remediation and other type of activities. Um, again, the next slide, Mr. Connolly. This is, this is your same thing looking at math. Uh, obviously, you can tell we are much stronger in, in English language arts than we are in math. Uh, last year, we were just under 26% passing math. English, we were just under 60% really want to see both of those go up and, and I feel very confident that we will. If you look just at the math data right now, uh, based on our NWA scores, and this would have been clear back in October, uh, right now we'd have about 33% passing math, which would be a really, really nice increase if we could uh, see that come uh, I-STEP time. So we're really excited about everything the math is doing as well. Okay, um, Just really our plan of attack, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start with math though, you know, we have RTI, uh, again, can't say enough about all our teachers, especially our math teachers um, and what they're doing. But also, you can't do RTI unless you also have teachers during BS are willing to take on 30-some kids. So you can free up teachers to go and, and, and do the thing and get that individualized work. So it, it's a total group effort. 
Uh, in RTI, you know, it, we say it's our best instruction of the day because we do the best job of really being directed. It's based on data, it's evidence-based, it's targeted. They're using the common form of assessments from the PLC model. They have pre and post test. Uh, it's, it's been really effective. One thing too that we've come up with this year is uh, kids have the option to opt in, or not really opt in, but they can opt out based on their performance. So if it shows, hey, you didn't score very well on NWA, but we'll give you a pretest that our math and English teachers have, have created, and they can say, hey, no, I've got that skill. Well, then they don't, they don't, they get to stay in their BS, which for some of them is a great, great opportunity that they're really cherishing. So that's worked out. Uh, on the math side, too, a big addition this year has been Math 10. Um, one thing the data showed us is a, a huge area of weakness for us was uh, the previous year we only had four of 67 students pass that were in geometry. Now, this is where the state test is, is really causes problems uh, for all of us is that if you are a sophomore in geometry, that's right where you should be. You're on perfect track. You shouldn't be, any, you're really any higher uh, or, or lower. That's where you're supposed to be. So to only have four of 67 students pass the I-step math that were in geometry that really showed us, okay, what are we doing there? So what we did is we created a Math 10. And what that is, is every sophomore that's in geometry is also in Math 10. That is basically, it's a refresher of Algebra 1. And what we found is it wasn't that kids didn't know how to do it. It's that they hadn't done that math in almost 16 months. And they just, you know, you, know, you show them, and they're like, oh, well, I know how to do that. And, and so we're really expecting to see huge gains. Uh, you know, if we could get half of that percentage of geometry, it would be a huge increase in, in our math percentage. So we're really excited about that. Uh, both math and English teams, uh, PLCs, meet three times a week during the school day. We were able to get that done this year. Uh, that's been huge. And then one other thing, too, is, uh, you know, Mr. Connolly, under his leadership, has talked about John Hattie and just knowing the impact of knowing your numbers. A lot of times I think kids are well, we're taking this test, we're taking that test. They didn't even really know what they were doing. So now for all our freshmen and sophomores, I would hope that you could go up to them and say, hey, what's your NWA math? What's your English? What's the cut score? And so they have an idea of, you know, what are we doing this for and where they're trying to get to and where they're at. Really focused in on that. Um, really on the, on the English side, about the same thing. But one thing we're really discussing right now is a goal of 90 minutes of reading and writing each day. Uh, one thing that we implemented this year with the new schedule is a silent sustained reading. Well, that's going to get you 32 minutes. So figuring out, well, in a class period of English, if you got another 40, where are we going to get that extra 30 so minutes to, to reach that goal? And I think we're going to see some, some really strong gains in reading uh, because of that time period and trying to reach that goal. So it's our basic plan of attack. And just to give you an idea, too, I, I can't stress enough how great the teachers are doing with our RTI. Uh, what you have there is... This was comparing the fall to the, to the last, well, beginning of the school year to where we just took it at the end of the nine weeks, which again I said is like, you know, October. Our real focus group is our sophomores. That's the group that's tested. That's the group that we spend the most time with RTI. Again, remember the juniors that you're seeing there are the ones that would be retaking it, that just retook it. And you can see, look at math, 280 points of growth shown uh, on an NWA score uh, test in about, about 11 weeks of school. Of that 280, 212 of those points are students that are in Math 10. So really show us, hey, this is paying off. Uh, you look at reading, 470 points of growth in that time span. And just a time span, just give you an idea there too, a year of growth is equal to four points. So to get that much growth out of students in that short of time really shows that we're targeting, really being directive. And then you can see language arts scores is also so. We're really excited. I uh, just need to keep, keep uh, stay the course with Scott and Christy and Randy said, feel really good about where the PLC uh, process has taken us and uh, uh, just feel strong about our data and, and where we're heading and uh, maintain that A. Okay. Uh, good job, guys. Yeah. Hard work. Yep. Number seven. Recognizing Mr. Murphy and Mr. Miller for their service on the school board. All right. Well, I've got a few things that uh, I'm going to go through here. Um, Mr. Murphy started his uh, uh, term back in 2003. Uh, he's been on the board for 15 and a half years. Um, during this time, uh, back in the 03-04 school year, um, Burkett students transferred to Mentone, and um, the Burkett Elementary School became the Burkett Education Center. It houses the TVSC Academy for all alternative education. 
Um, the Burkett Education Center is in its 16th year of ex in existence. During that time, 331 Burkett students have graduated with a diploma from Tippecanoe Valley High School, and that's, that's to be commended. 2005-06 um, school year uh, saw the completion of a major renovation uh, at the high school. There were five classrooms added, one art room, four science classrooms, um, and then uh, all of the administrative office, offices, guidance, and, and health and athletics offices were also added there. A uh, new wastewater treatment plant was constructed during 2006 and 7. Thank you for that. Um, during the summer of 2007, a new <coughs> multi-purpose facility, concession, um, concession stand, ticket booth, and restrooms uh, was constructed at the main entrance of the football field. Um, during 2009, um, the corporation completed an energy savings project at Burkett. Um, we put in a uh, horizontal geothermal field. Uh, in 2011, the, the board met and approved the construction of the wind turbine on the campus of the high school and the middle school uh, on uh, November uh, 11th, or I'm sorry, uh, November 15th of 2011 is the first day that that turbine began producing electricity. And at that point, um, in January 1st, 2014, Mr. Miller came on to the board and he's finishing his fourth year here. So these things are, are both with Stan and uh, <coughs> Brian, um, during the 14-15 school year, uh, we, we started a uh, Tippecanoe Valley High School soccer program. Um, the, the board approved that. Uh, it was IHSA sanctioned in 2016 and 17 after two years as a club sport. Um, you know, we, we put uh, a full-size game field and a smaller practice field behind the football field. In January 2015, uh, the Farm to Fork program uh, began with the arrival of four calves, and we raised those calves on the property uh, out by the football field. Um, in 2014, uh, the board approved the design uh, and development drawings and co estimated costs for the Akron Elementary School project. Um, and then the summer of 2016 saw the construction of a new press box on the west side of the football field. Uh, the press box was donated by the uh, Bibbler family in memory of the late Scott Bibbler. As part of the overall project, seating of the home fans uh, was changed from the east to the west side of the field. Uh, we put in new bleachers there and moved the, uh, the bleachers from that point over to the soccer field. So we have a, a great complex out there at the, at the high school. Uh, both Mr. Murphy and Mr. Miller, they've served, served the school corporation uh, on several different committees uh, that, that we have. And they've, bon they've both been active participants in the uh, Indiana School Boards Association. There's a lot of professional development that is offered, and these gentlemen have, have chosen to participate in that. And those are, those are hours away, away from their family, and we appreciate that continued um, pursuit of excellence. So, um, Stan, you served on the, the Burkett Education Committee. We appreciate that. Brian, you served on, on negotiations several years. Uh, I'll give the floor to you guys. Stan, do you have anything to say? Well, I'd just like to thank the community, number one, for giving me the trust and support that they did to uh, put me in this position. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I couldn't have asked for a better group, uh, board, administration, and staff to work with. And I'm very proud to be a Viking. I really feel we have one of the best in the state, if not the best. I really feel that strong about our community and uh, our staff and our, our teachers and our administration, top notch. And I'm very proud to be part of it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I kind of say what Stan says. I, I appreciate the uh, community for, for allow me to be on the board for 15 and a half years. I tell people when I came on the board, I was in my 30s. Now I'm going off, I'm in my 50s. <laughs> uh, my youngest was in elementary and he's 25 years old now. So it goes fast. Um, but I also think, you know, a lot of people don't realize what the board does and what's all involved in running a school. I know I didn't when I, when I came on the board back in 2003. Um, you know, I think everyone should, should at least come to board meetings or at least be on the board and kind of understand what goes involved. Um, I'm proud of what Mr. Connolly read as a board. I mean, it was a, it was a group effort. It wasn't Brian Murphy or Stan, but, but a group effort. 
Um, in the 15 and a half years that I've been on the board, I've worked with a great boards, um, people that have become really good friends, a uh, friend that I would call best friends. Uh, Mr. Connolly's one of them. Uh, and these two new guys that come on, I didn't know Adam and Aaron that well, but I, but I, but I do now. And uh, I consider them very good friends. All these guys would, would give their shirt off the back to help us. Um, the main thing is, as a board, we, we always tried to strive was what was doing best for what's for the students. And once the students were taken care of, then we looked at the staff and the facilities. And, I, and I'm real confident with the new board members coming on that that tradition will, will carry on, that students will come first. We'll do what's right for the students. Uh, I'm tickled to death that Blaine Conley is our superintendent. I think uh, he's the right man for the job, and he's doing a fantastic job in his first year. And he's had quite a bit of trials and, and, and things to go through, and he's handled it as a professional as he is. And uh, I just thank God for him. But uh, yeah, I just uh, I really appreciate being on the board. I remember when I got elected, people were like, do you know what you're getting into? And I honestly didn't. Um, but I honestly, did appreciate being on the board and running for those many times, but I'm a firm believer in term limits, and I think after four terms, it's time for, for a change, and I, I'm excited that Tom Bowders won. Um, he's a very smart man. Um, he'll do an excellent job as a board member, and, and Miss Lisa there, Miss Weiss, she'll do an excellent job. Like I worked with her dad, and, uh, and if she's anything like her dad, she's going to do excellent, because uh, he's a super nice guy. So, but I just thank the community for the opportunity to serve on the board. And we do have a great community. I mean, we just heard that the community has raised $90,000 for this, these families, and that's just awesome for being a small community. We step up, we need it. The Miracle Tree, if you get a chance to go out there and see that, I've been involved with that in the three years it's been. It's amazing what this little church and the community itself does. I mean, it's not just the church, but it's the community. And that's the beautiful thing about Tiffany Valley. I believe green and gold, right there with with black and gold too, but <laughs> I'm a Valley Viking from day one to the day I die, and just proud to, to call myself a Valley Viking. So it's been a pleasure. Thanks. Let's give these guys a round of applause. Gentlemen, we have a couple plaques for you and uh, a lifetime pass to all athletic events here. So I understand if we can get a picture with Adam. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> nice try, buddy. You want one at a time, or do you want to? Uh, are you going to shoot behind me? Okay. <laughs> We're all shooting behind me. We can do both. We can do both. Yeah. Unless yeah. well, you don't like each other, really. No. <laughs> We're family. We have to like each other. Well, this guy, you don't want me to. Okay, I'll take two. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all you've done for us. Thank you. all we have for this evening, so we will adjourn. Thank you for coming.